All right. So I wanted to start the show with a little bit of sports. And I mean that very um, sincerely because the Taylor Swift thing with the Super Bowl, we'll get into that to some extent, um, is one part of the whole like right wing war on uh, on on America's biggest event. But it's now gone beyond that, beyond Taylor Swift into just football itself. And I want you to listen to this as our first sound of the show today. I mean, let's be real here. This is bread and circuses on steroids. Major League Sports in and of itself is nothing but a psyop. Get kids plugged into the cycle of going to public indoctrination camps, playing sports for their school, and going to games. Many end up devoting their entire childhood to competing in various sports, only to be cut from the team, at which point they become brainwashed into supporting professional teams because they know their dreams of becoming a pro athlete will probably never happen. So then they become obsessed with some grown man who gets paid millions of dollars every year to throw a ball around while promoting poison death shots and child slave labor through various brand deals and endorsements. So sad. Let's see who ends up winning the Super Bowl and if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from an artificially, culturally propped up couple this fall. Only time will tell. But don't forget who warned you and predicted it before it happens. So that is One American News Network. And if I showed that to you in like 2015 and I blocked out the lower third, I think a lot of people would guess that that came from MSNBC. <laughs> the idea of sports being this scam sports ball. But suddenly, like, we've gotten to this point. Mina, we've gotten to this point where the right wing, the movement, has decided to attack just sports as a concept which to me is just the worst political strategy for that group of all time. Uh, yeah, there was a few things while that woman was talking that uh, made me react in the help I'm hit fashion because <laughs> she was kind of nailing me. Um, but I think you're right. I, it reminds me a little bit of, um, I saw, I can't remember which network it was. Somebody was criticizing Taylor Swift for uh, flying private. And it was pointed out that, wait, so now you're actually, this is a pro-climate change argument, right? And I think that's similar to what you're describing, which is yes. uh, you go so far right that suddenly you're flanking from the left, uh, is how I would describe that clip we just watched. It, it's What I find fascinating about this is sports, and, and this is actually kind of a continuation on something I think we've talked about, this us three. Sports and Taylor Swift are the closest things we have in modern society to monoculture. No like, there's question. nothing else. There's so few things now. And this is actually another thing we're going to talk about. It, it gets out. There are so few things that are almost just, I wouldn't even say universally liked. They're just a universal thing that product that everybody consumes. Yes, they're enormous. They're the biggest tent that everyone still walks into despite liking many other things otherwise. Marvel my, my husband, Marvel movies are somewhere in there, right? A distant third though. A distant third these days, I would say. Yeah, there my husband is a music producer, you guys know this, and I remember asking him a couple of years ago, "Do you like Taylor Swift? Like do you, do you appreciate her work?" And he looked at me and he was like, it's like an iPhone. I don't know. It's just like every, you know, they're, they're, I'm, I don't dislike it. It wasn't pro or con. His point was just that it is everywhere. It is ubiquitous. It is appealing to everyone or most people, it seems. And that's what I find so fascinating about this and what Pablo said. The fact that um, all these conspiracy theories and hate and, and politics are being projected onto two things that are so wildly unobjectionable or wildly just normal generic to generic an extent mainstream is, yes. yeah that's I, I, I it's fascinating i don't think it's strategic i think it's just flip like sh throwing darts and they happen to land on the biggest possible bullseye but before before the last few months of this wouldn't you say that the single most objectionable thing about taylor swift was just that that she's everywhere that that was the greatest trigger on anyone not liking her that she's had too much success, she's got too much of everything, and then someone goes to her show and there are people outside the arena singing her song because they cannot get in, and then they see the show, the people were there, and they're like, well, that's kind of amazing. But what was objectionable? She's like something out of Disney, but now Disney's also objectionable. 
Well, it feels like what they've done is they've bullied Goliath into being a David. And so the NFL and Taylor Swift are like this weird underdog against this political movement. A political movement that I will remind you used to be sports personified. Like the reason why this is so funny to me is that like the Republican Party, the right wing, once upon a time, Gerald Ford, right? Like playing football. I think of all of these guys, these jocks. It was the party of jocks. It's the party of all these politicians who, in the caricature from the left, were like the, you know, the numbskulled, football-brained idiots. And now what we've done is come all the way around. It's just, it speaks to just the, I, I think, I agree with Mita. It's just like a non-strategic decision, but it also just feels like um, an incoherent one. Well, you say and this. a but, weird one. But you say this, Pablo, and Mina, help me with some of this, because I keep saying, no matter how some of these arguments continue to stupefy me, the way that they go, I keep saying in this echo chamber some version of this is funny to me or this is dumb. But in the other echo chamber, it is not. And I'm confused by how it is, even as it becomes more and more difficult to have moral consistencies along all of these lines before you find conflict, I am confused that the other side would listen to what we're saying and just simply argue, no, you're funny and you're dumb the way that you're doing this i think there's i i this is not strategic look the afc championship game just broke records people are still watching football this is not a calculated let's take the side opposite football because it's not popular football is as popular as ever i think however what what is happening is if there's any strategy it's less about a coherent political um stance or an argument, but the strategy is to see, oh, here's are here are the two of the remaining things in culture that move the needle. Let's ride that wave. Because right now, uh, there are so few things that everybody talks about. And some of that is due to the, you know, fragmentation of culture, as we kind of talk about. Some of it is if I hop on social media. I am directed to Travis Kelsey content, Taylor Swift content, and football content. So naturally, people who are in the business of getting eyeballs, that matters to them more than, you know, uh, electing a candidate. The people who we're talking about who are yes. making this argument, they, don't, they, they want to get eyeballs. They want to get attention. They want to ride that algorithmic wave. They are seeing, and th this is the strategy aspect of it, oh, if I talk about these four topics that everybody is talking about right now, it doesn't matter what kind of boneheaded, insane conspiracy theory I graft onto it. I will go viral. I will get attention. I will join this movement. And I think that is what is motivating this more than anything, Pablo. Yeah, look, I, I want to, uh, you know, a tip of the cap to Dan for pointing out that somewhere there's a different echo chamber and we should be acknowledging the ways in which we are talking to each other. And we generally agree fundamentally on like the bottom line principles of this thing. But what we're trying to do also, as Mina just did, is sort of discern like what's really happening here and why. And you're right. Yeah. It is about engagement in any form. And it also means that this party, which used to embrace sports, remember, like Colin Kaepernick used to be a campaign issue because he wasn't sticking enough to the thing that now the right wing is saying um, should not be stuck to as a general thing people should like. And so the people who are invading, who are like in this tug of war, maybe for like the soul of the right wing movement, include this guy. Travis Kelsey is this guy who also kind of out of the blue became this Big time celebrity, really rich, really powerful. Why? He's a tight end. He's like a glorified lineman. That doesn't make any sense. Tight ends aren't famous people in football. What are you talking about? What world are we living in? Sure seems planned. Sure seems like something that is like concocted in order to accelerate the fame of these two people, get them to the Super Bowl, the largest screens on earth. Do you know how little you need to know about sports and talking to a microphone for me to feel like a jock in comparison to you? Like, that's Benny Johnson, one of these influencers that is now very popular, Dan. And that dude doesn't know sh about sports in any way. And that's the party that, that um, you know, the, the former grift uh, that, again, campaigned on uh, keep sports pure. These guys just don't even like it 
even vaguely. You say this, but I'm assuming that the two people we have shown uh, have followings that probably aren't Enormous coming here followings. to do anything other than end up in the comments and do the trolling that so many people enjoy doing because there are a lot of lonely people out there addicted to their devices who enjoy uh, having a voice in these forums that perhaps they do not have in other places. And I want to, again, Again, press you guys on because I did some of this on our show this week and I am genuinely confused by it. I thought Taylor Swift was just benign. I don't think her telling people to vote is anything controversial. I do feel and see the undercurrent of a party that seems to be anti-woman in a lot of very obvious ways going after a woman who has powerful young women in her influence and can act Actually, be someone who uses that power in a way that is threatening because where we are right now, anyone who has power right now in these calls for equality that I keep saying sound like threats becomes a threat to the people who are armed and are used to having that power. So anybody in those instances can become Taylor Swift if they simply yeah. ride against you politically. It doesn't even matter who they are. They are simply a vessel for trolls to attack because it's on the other side of something. And no matter who's talking about this, they all have their armies and no one's coming to the other side. No one's being persuaded. No one's changing their minds. There aren't even fence sitters anymore i think there are a lot of fence sitters they're just not online uh but i also think dan you hit on something that we should acknowledge because pablo and i were talking about the sort of the the creator side of it. like why are these people making this argument and we're both very cynical we're talking about how they're just trying to surf pop culture waves and get eyeballs and i think that's true however you have hit on something in your point about misogyny and why Taylor Swift in particular, that I do think um, we also, Pablo, we have to acknowledge, well, why does the argument work? Like, why is it? It works in part because of the fame and you're you're riding this wave, but it also works because of there, there are undercurrents of um, misogyny and gatekeeping and this feeling of having masculine spaces invaded that I think do underlie a lot of the bad feelings, and there, there are people who have bad feelings about seeing Taylor Swift for 0.5 seconds on their TV screens. I don't think it's a straw, like I, um, it's so funny. This thing is so uh, monolithic now that Colin Cowherd has become like the uh, <laughs> yes. feminist uh, icon. No, Mina, Taylor this Swift is, fans. so this is my, uh, I, I don't mean to, to interrupt you like so many of these people would like to <laughs> force Taylor Swift to stop talking, but that's okay. exactly it. No, like the, the, Colin Cowherd, okay, has become this icon to Swifties because he actually is seeing the marketplace clearly. There's a lot of really weird, lonely, insecure men out there. Um, the fact that a pop star, the world's biggest pop star, is dating a star tight end who had one of his greatest games ever, and a network puts them on the air briefly, that it bothers you, what does that say about your life? And this is where the fence sitter stuff, I think, is actually quite relevant. I think there are a lot of people who love sports. OK, there are a lot of people forget about yeah. Taylor Swift. They just love sports. And when they hear a guy talking about a tight end, clearly this no name has become an engineered product by the Biden administration. They're like, oh, wait a minute. I can't even swallow this bull. Right. It's not a political take. It's not a conspiracy. It's something that they know so intuitively and obviously as a fan of football that they're like, oh, no, I think this is bull. It's embarrassing. But Mina, you can talk to what I mean, you can have specific experience and knowledge how men or cavemen have reacted to you invading the man cave. You particularly, mm. you coming in to the football sphere and sitting next to Ryan Clark and Orlovsky and Dominique and having your opinion, looking the way you do, looking like most people don't look when talking about football over the last 50 years. You've invaded this space and you've been made to feel welcome by colleagues but I think the constituency, the customer, has made that somewhat difficult for you. That's been an obstacle course. Yeah, I, I think, though, th you, you have pretty different dynamics at play. I think for me, 
Um, a lot of the misogyny or resistance I've encountered over the years has been men feeling sus- or, yeah, men feeling suspicious of wh- why is she here? What c- credibility does she have? I must know more, etc. I think with the, the with the Taylor Swift um, backlash, and it's not you know universal, um, and and maybe it's even being overstated. I don't know, but the impression I get is that people are annoyed with the idea of the product, or rather, other fans being allowed into their space. I I don't think most men who watch football games are like really upset by the fact that they're showing Taylor Swift for two seconds. I think they're upset with the idea of what it signifies. Oh, other people are now being allowed in here or, um, you know, the product is being diluted in some ways. I I think that's kind of a different phenomena. That's normal with like bands and stuff, right? That you're, uh, that you're attached. You think that's what's happening there? You like this indie band and all of a sudden they become more and more popular. Football's a funny one to do this with because it's like (laughs) the the Rolling Stones or or the Beatles. uh, (laughs) Exactly. It's uh, it's not an exclusive club. I feel like when men, when, when these, um, morons, these misogynists, um, Frankly, uh, when they get mad at Mina, they don't eventually get radicalized into hating football itself. <laughs> like that is where like the ceiling on that as a coherent um, approach absolutely falls short. And actually, I, I the coward thing was so funny to me, Mina, because it was just like the yeah. easiest layup of like, oh, wait a minute. One of the sportsmen are going to like uh, elevate our queen. And I just want to help Dan get a version of that. How can we how can we strategize on a take that Dan can say? In so a Dan similar can tap fashion? into the Swifty audience. You were we're do you're doing the same calculus that Ben Johnson, <laughs> that Ben Johnson and that weird OAN lady did, by the way, in doing this. Oh, but Pablo, I, think I mean, work. Pablo loves the idea that the entire world has turned attention into currency. Pablo, like, well, they'll take his shirt off. He's like, yeah, slather it all over my chest, all over my nipples. Attention? Currency? I'd love to be there. You're trying to get me somebody that uh, elevates me that way while secretly strategizing so that Pablo finds out has that particular viral appeal. I mean... I see through you. I'll show a nipple. I just think it's funny. We're in a world, look, you wake up in 2024 and the face of math is Dan Campbell. And the face of of ball knowing, relatively speaking, is me. Because I know that Travis Kelsey is good at football. Okay, but you guys say what a this. Life. No, but you what guys a life. The, the, the part the part that we explored some on our show this week, when Mina's talking about fandom being earned, the idea of that, that I actually understand. Jets fans looking over at the Swifties and being like, Really? You just got here. You don't know who Travis Kelsey is. You think Colin Cowherd's a silver fox and you get to play in the Super Bowl six minutes after you got I here. Know. I know. How did you, literally, you just showed up and you're rooting for the best team in the NFL. You won two road playoff games. You think that's normal to go just, hey, let's go through the playoffs with the best quarterback and the best tight end. And even though we're the underdog, we're going to win road playoff games. A glorified lineman. I I just caught Dan uh, with, with acidity, say Silver Fox. And I think that's a solution. That's the pivot Dan needs to make. Mm. Don't see, don't see silver to coward as his brand. You can compete on that on that front, Dan. Just go, just go get grayer, have more stress and death in my life. Just uh, go, go. Yes, good, good suggestion. Perhaps I'll do that. Excellent. Yes, my face, my face is aged twenty years in the last two. Yes, let's do more of that. 